Hey, welcome back to the garage where we're going to be continuing work on an unsuspecting project, my dad's 1988 first generation Toyota 4Runner. This thing was just in for a simple spring replacement in the last video, but it turned into an entire head gasket replacement. It was just a stroke of luck or misfortune, however you want to call it, that it happened here in my garage instead of out on the highway going back to his place. And in this video, we're going to be doing a leak down test to locate the exact cylinder or cylinders that have had the head gasket failure. But before we do that, we have to clean up a huge puddle of coolant that is a result of this head gasket failure. So as many of you saw in the last video, at the end, all of the coolant started leaking out the exhaust to correspond with this newly found head gasket failure and it is currently still dripping out the exhaust onto my garage floor. So recently I've been contacted by the fine folks at Super Clean Products, and they must have noticed that I have a lot of these kind of issues going on in my garage because they offered up a few products of theirs, one of them being this floor absorbent kitty litter type stuff. And I can't think of a better use of it than to clean this nasty mess up. Let's see how this stuff works. It looks like it just soaks in and then you can sweep it up maybe. All right, so I've let it sit for a couple minutes and I can see that it's starting to clump up and it looks like it's absorbed the majority of this mess. So this is just one of the products that Super Clean sent me. They sent me some other things like engine degreaser and wheel cleaner, which we'll use some of those on this 4Runner as we go through it. Looking forward to seeing how they perform. All right, let's get to doing this leak down test. Now to do a leak down test, you will need an air compressor because it does need a constant supply of air to be pushed down into the cylinders. You'll also need to remove the, all the spark plugs, so make sure you have access to those. And you'll also need access to the crankshaft bolt so you can turn the engine over so you can measure each cylinder independently. All right, now I'm finally ready to do the leak down test. Now, obviously I've taken off way more here than you actually need to to do a leak down test. I know I'm gonna be taking off the cylinder heads here. I mean, this thing obviously has a head gasket leak. I mean, just look at the oil filler cap. Yeah, that's not good. And when we look at the oil level here. Yeah, there's no doubt we're gonna be changing head gaskets on this thing. I'm just curious where the head gasket failure happened. 
I was also curious about what the condition of the timing belt was. Obviously, I'm going to be changing that out, putting a new water pump in while I'm doing all of this, but I just wanted to have full visibility of everything. So what I've done is I've turned the crankshaft clockwise so that the alignment mark on the balancer pulley here aligns with zero degree marking on the front. And I also can see that the camshafts are aligned with their markers here in this back plate. And that tells me that this is at top dead center for cylinder one. So cylinder one is the forward most one here on the passenger side. And now I'm gonna put in my spark plug hole adapter for my leak down tester. This right here, you just thread it into the spark plug hole. All right, so that's inserted. Here is the leak down tester. It's made by OTC. It's a really high quality one. And you just hook that line up to this. Then you hook your air compressor line up to this other side. So right now my compressor is sitting at about 100 PSI, which is plenty to do this test. And then we just turn the pressure on. We'll take it up to about 75 PSI. And we can see that on that cylinder, it's only holding uh, 66 PSI. And now you have to listen to where the leakage is coming from. I can hear a noise right now. Actually, you're quite a bit of sound coming through this oil filler cap. That means it's going past the rings a little bit. The tester comes with this handy chart in here. Since we turned the pressure up to 75 PSI, and we had about 66 being held in the cylinder. That's a 12% leakage on cylinder one. So that cylinder's not too bad. Now we're gonna move on to cylinder two. Now to find top dead center of cylinder two, I just stick one of these quarter inch extensions down into the spark plug hole. So it rests on top of the cylinder and then we just turn the crankshaft so that it reaches the top of its stroke. So you just have to keep an eye on this. So that's inserted in the spark plug hole. Just rotate the engine here. Okay, so that's now at the top of its stroke. We'll insert the pressure tester into that hole. Sounds a little bit better at about 68 PSI being held in the cylinder. And it's just coming past the rings, which is pretty normal for any engine, especially one with, you know, 200,000 miles on it. No sound coming out the exhaust, so that's good news. No perceivable noise coming out the intake either. So it sounds like the valves are sealing up all right. Let's move on to cylinder three. All right, so I've made it back to cylinder six. The one I suspected was the one that was causing the head gasket failure. And sure enough, watch what happens when we turn up the pressure on this. Turn up to 75, only 28% is being held in the cylinder. And watch this. It's going directly into the coolant passage and the pressurizing <laughs> the coolant system. So we know for sure that the head gasket that has failed is over here on the driver's side. In fact, when I did the leak down test on cylinder four, it was only holding 60 PSI. And when I listened, it sounded like a lot of the noise was coming through both the intake and the rings. That tells me that maybe the intake valve is not sealing. All right, so here are the leak down readings. So cylinder one, 12% leakage. Cylinder two, 9% leakage. Cylinder three, 7% leakage. Cylinder four, 15% leakage, and cylinder five, 8% leakage, cylinder six, 63% leakage. So that is obviously the cylinder that has failed. Um, cylinder one and cylinder four do have higher leakage numbers, but you know, it's an older engine. Some air is getting past the rings more than others, and I think it's probably okay. So here are the spark plugs I removed, and all these look, you know, I mean, they're old, but none of them look terrible except for number six and if you look at that it is damp it smells like coolant and that's because it is coolant
So there you have it, kind of an academic approach of where did the head gasket fail more so than just the head gasket failed. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll get the rest of this engine stripped down and get the cylinder heads off the engine and get them sent off to a machine shop. And I'll also get to ordering all the parts because there's quite a few that I need to get so that we can put this thing back together as soon as possible. Until then, we'll see you guys again next time. Oh,